Dan Caldwell, we're here. First week's over of a, a massive cycle, a massive build up towards the World Cup. Exciting times. Yeah, absolutely exciting. You can see the buzz around the place, uh, all the fans here, you know, everyone talking about us going off to the World Cup. Uh, everyone definitely knows about it. The world, the world knows and the country knows. So, uh, yeah, it's really, really exciting times. What's that like, especially considering from someone like yourself, when you started out playing even at elite level in, in this country to where we are now? Because it's been a long time coming and crowds are, crowds are minimal back then. Yeah, if you, if you look at the crowd here today, that was probably the amount that we would normally get at a game. Um, so the, the growth of the game, the growth of this team has been really surreal and really, really special to witness and still be a part of. Um, but, you know, deep down, I think we all knew that we could achieve this and we just needed the support and the backing. And, you know, what we've achieved in the last five years is, has been phenomenal. And the, the backing that the country has shown has also been phenomenal and attributed to our success. How big or how important was it that you delivered on 2017? Because obviously when the, when the process and such like that happened and you got a lot of the things you wanted, there was an onus down on, on delivering. How important is it that you've got managed to get over the line and get to it first? Round? Yeah, 100%. You know, there was pressure on ourselves after taking that stance. Um, but again, I think we probably exceeded our expectations in terms of the length of time it took to achieve a, a tournament. Uh, five years was really impressive for the, for the length of time that it took after our action in 2017 so uh, you know I think you just got to rise to the challenge it was pressure on us but we've we've risen to it and uh, now we're going to a World Cup. To qualify for the World Cup especially off the back of what happened in the campaign previous with the, the game away in Ukraine where yeah. we knew what the result we needed to qualify like when you look back at that to now where you are now I must fill you with pride the fact that because it could have went one or two ways mm. it could have went backwards off the back of that because it's such a disappointment. Yeah, you're probably right, but you know that was such a disappointment for all of us. Um, something we really regret, but maybe we did learn from it. Maybe it did help us to deal with the pressure situations that followed. Maybe helped us get us over the line. Um, that's just probably the only way that we can think about it and, and take something from it. For for you, there's there's a couple of players who've achieved the milestone of 100 caps. You're close. Can you think about that now? Or no, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think about it. Uh, whatever happens, happens. Um, if I reach it, I reach it. Hopefully, I will. Um, it's definitely been something I've, I've been aspiring towards. But uh, you can't think too much forward. You know, you got to just try to keep fit and healthy, and, and hopefully, be doing a good job where you're getting selected and, and you're performing at a high level. That's that's all I focus on. How do you kind of keep your head under control over in the, these weeks? Like, are you a week to week person? Is it day to day? Are you waking up every morning, looking at the schedule, being like, okay, that's what I need to do for today and not thinking about June 29th? No, you just need to relax and enjoy it, you know, enjoy training every day. Uh, have your have your goals for each day in training and, and uh, what things you want to improve on to help the team. But you, you can't really look at the bigger picture. I think it would get too much. Um, but that being said, you just have to enjoy it because this is a once in a lifetime experience. It's something that we've all dreamt of as a little kid to get to a final tournament, uh, be it the Euros or World Cup. And now it's the biggest of the biggest tournament in the world, you know, so you just got to really enjoy it and not get too overwhelmed in it, but um, be focused and uh, yeah, embrace it all. Admittedly, it's not that long into the camp, so we might not be able to answer this, but is there any sort of a different atmosphere or a feel around the team? Or is everyone, as you say, just kind of trying to keep that relaxed head mm. and just being like, this is just another international camp. We're just going to play Zambia in France and then what happens, happens. Um, well, I just joined the team yesterday, so I don't really know. But um, I think it's basically the same. You know, when we when we join up with each other, we love seeing each other. There's such a great energy um, and great mood in the team. And I think maybe... It's just slightly different because we know what's coming. You know, there's obviously games up and coming, but the big end goal is the group stage and getting over to Australia. So that's, of course, in everyone's mind and everyone, of course, wants to be on that plane. So there's probably a bit more of a focus to us and maybe a competitive edge, but um, we love being around each other and, and that will never change. You mentioned coming into camp a little bit later on, I believe, congratulations. Yes, I thank you. If, you. if you want to speak about it, but it must have been a whirlwind few weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's hard to plan a wedding being a professional footballer, but uh, I had Vera a part of my plans, believe it or not, one year ago. And uh, obviously we had the aim of qualifying. 
so we sat down and said, okay, what date can I get married? <laughs> uh, so she was involved and we, we thought 10th of June would be okay. Uh, so yeah, I got married last Saturday uh, in Greece. So it's been a, definitely a whirlwind. It was very surreal coming into training yesterday on the back of a, of a wedding and holiday. But uh, I mean, this is a summer of a lifetime for me personally. So uh, that's why I've got a big smile on my face. <laughs> I'd imagine but, yeah. it was a, a lovely few days of friends and family and, yeah, and yeah. sunshine as well. It was fabulous. <laughs> we were on a small Greek island, Skiathos, and with my close friends and family. And yeah, it was just amazing. And it was paradise and just enjoyed every minute of it. And how is that now, I suppose, trying to switch your focus? Like, mm. I know you, you obviously had that yeah, I think, for you a know, long time. So. Yeah, once, once you're here and once you're with the team and you're on the pitch the focus just switches immediately you know I don't need to, to think about that but I think it was just a nice break to get away before the the craziness begins and I have two weeks just with my close friends and family and um, switch off from football for a little bit because it's also needed in your life that you need to have a little bit of balance um, especially on the back of a long season over in England so um, now that we're here it's it's yeah back to work and full, full speed ahead. I suppose, how do you reflect on the club season? Obviously a difficult one for you guys at Reading. Like, how do you look, at it, look back on it now with that little bit of time and space? Yeah, it was a difficult season, obviously. Um, but, you know, we didn't play to our potential. And I think over the course of, of a season, if if you find yourself bottom and relegated, it's, uh, it's no surprise, you know, the table doesn't lie. And, um, yeah, we, we have a lot of things to work on at Reading. And... Um, Hopefully the team can can get back up to the WSL quickly. What is your situation? Like, I think you envisage being out in the next season. Obviously, part time. It's been significant changes. Like, mm. yeah, we'll have to see. I'm contracted for another year, but uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm just focusing on Ireland right now and uh, making sure we're all 100% ready for the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, it's a double whammy really when that happens after the relegation. You get the nils then. Like, mm. it is deflating, obviously. But yeah, it's it's a bit of a surprise, but I think it just goes to show you the, um, you know, the different attitudes that there are at clubs. You know, some clubs are really behind their women's programs, and it's evident in their success. And, and other teams are not so much behind their women's programs, and it's it's no surprise then that you find yourself being relegated. You know, it's 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 all re relative. Just just to take you back on a more positive note to St. Patrick's Day because mm. you were Grand Marshal and yeah. I know that you take collective pride in what the team does and you're part of a group but you were front and centre mm. like how was that just for yourself and your family and friends to yeah yeah there. it was a really beautiful occasion actually I obviously would have gone to the Paddy's Day Parade as a kid with my family um, and then to be asked to represent the team with Vera as Grand Marshal was really unique and just a really memorable experience yeah it was lovely it was really nice Hopefully a homecoming with the World Cup in August. Uh, another parade through the world. Yeah, hopefully. You never know. <laughs> fingers fingers crossed, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you never know. You never know.